Thank you, uh, Chairman, and, and, and uh, thank you, Minister, and your officials for being before us today. And well, it's a real crisis in the forestry sector. Um, that my serious worries, of course, is over 500 jobs in West Cork and Line here, uh, on the, and, and, and have continued to be uh, on the edge. Uh, many of them worried about losing their, their, their jobs and looking at another country to bring in the timber from, which is kind of an astonishing situation we find ourselves in. And Minister, I, I just have a few questions, um, and I know other members want to come in, so I'm not going to hold the air with a search. But Minister, why should any member of this committee, or indeed any member of the uh, of the forestry and timber sector, a native industry employing 12,000 people in rural Ireland, believe you when you say that the department is going to reach its targets of 4,500 licences for this year. Only 1,900 forestry licences have been issued up to the 23rd of July. In a parliamentary uh, response I received last week, I was informed by the department uh, that this is, was up to 25% on the same time last year, which is in a, is in a regular line we have heard from the department through 2021. But it is a ridiculous defence when you consider the implosion in licence output in 2020. Minister, what miracle is going to occur in the final few months of this year to enable the department to turn out 2,600 licences and reach the 4,500 4, uh, target? And Minister also, can I please ask that you uh, and Minister McConnell Logue and your officials please refrain from comparing output from this year to that of 2020 to paint a rosy picture of improvements made on the forestry licensing open. A parliamentary question again I tabled in early July outlined that while yes, felling licenses issued in 2021 are up 28% compared to 2020, they are down 191% in compared to 2019. Uh, the last really comparable, genuine comparable year. On a similar note, Afforestation licences are up 8% compared to 2020, but down 28% compared to 2019. And I think it's unfair to be using this, this ingenuous defence to cover up the department's inept, uh, ineptitude on this licensing issue. And it has to stop. You have to be honest and compare like per like. It's down 191%. And that's the only comparison that we really can make by 2019. And on the Ash back. And I, this is the last question, uh, Chairman, because I know other members want to come in. You know, I, I spoke to a lady um, from, Chairman, from I think your own, like the land um, in, in Killinall, in relation to Ash Dieback. Now, she has spent the past 12 months trying to contact you, Minister, and, and your department, and has issued a very warm welcome to you to see the crisis that she uh, has found herself in, for you to come down to see her, um, the Ash Dieback and her farm. And she's, even met you here at the recent protest, you promised you would come down, and she since has contacted you again, and you failed to reply to her. And it's not a, a nasty welcome, it's a, it's a genuine welcome. Like she said to me, that if a, a farmer, and anyone that is in farming, has a TB in their land, uh, they, they get fairly and honestly compensated. But they have, their uh, forestry is ruined by Ash Dieback, and they're not compensated. And I'd like, if you, you know, I'm, Obviously, the chairman, it is your area, and um, if you'd like to accompany her, Matthew McGrath said he'd do the same. They'd like to accompany to this lady's farm to show the devastation that this has caused and the fact that, that there is no proper compensation in place for these, these farmers. So, look, there are three questions that are very genuine. Uh, this issue has gone on so long, it's, it's causing serious problems, and obviously I'm very worried in relation to the, to the factory in West Cork Rangers, uh, sawmills in, 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 in Ballinine in a scheme that uh, there's going to lead to massive job losses. And I'd like to be able to find out today that at least the felling licences, uh, the targets that we were to meet, are going to be met or are they going to be met? And Minister, someone needs to talk in your department and need to be straight up and tell the truth here. Thank you. Well, can I give the Colin? Uh, Minister? Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Deputy Collins. Um, well, I, I firstly would like to assure the, the Deputy that there is, there is no cover-up here. I mean, I think we've been very transparent with the figures, we've been transparent with, with the output each week, and we've been transparent with the reasons um, behind, um, dead, behind backlogs and the, and the different backlogs that have existed. Um, you will see from my opening a statement, actually, I didn't make any comparison to 2020, and I, I appreciate where you're coming from. There are a lot of comparisons made with 2020. Look, I 
uh, I'm only in position um, 13 or 13 months. I wasn't here before 2020, nor was Minister McConnell. Oh, but I, I take your point. Look, 2020 was not a good year, and uh, it's not it's not the best comparison. But we, we do try to uh, compare with other years. And, and I did indicate that in 20, July 2019, we've had the highest number of licenses issued in June of this year, 415. So I think that is a very positive trend. I think that's something, um, and I think, I would like to think that that would instill some confidence in the committee that we are on the on the right path here. Um, we have implemented um, system changes. We have taken on uh, more um, resources, more ecologists, forestry inspectors, and so forth. And I think you know, from June alone, if we just look at this June, I mean, we have seen a, a, an improvement over the last previous number of months. So I think that is to be welcomed. Um, I think the in in relation to um, again, I suppose in relation to, I mean. We have always imported timber into this country. Um, I agree we're probably importing more now than we should be, and that, that is certainly something we want to see the end of. But we, it's not a case that we are only importing timber now. We, ha we have always imported timber in some shape or form to Ireland. Um, the stakeholders, many of the, the stakeholders on Project Woodland, I have 24 or 25 of them, they are, um, they, have, they, are, they are representatives of the industry, they are representatives of growers, they are representatives of the environmental sector, they are representatives of communities, so there is a, a, a whole engagement there. Um, across the sector and it's not an easy um it's not an easy um engagement to, to keep together and i i would actually like to commend each and every one of them for sticking with the process because it is frustrating for for many of them for different reasons and and i think it's important that the, the that they they are react they are interacting um in a collaborative fashion and that is to be welcomed um in relation to your ash dieback uh, um qu uh, query yes um we have in, in, in the last week or so, you know, in, increased, extended the, the age to which plantations can avail of the, of the scheme at the moment. Um, and I think that has been welcomed um, widely. Um, you, you made reference to the, the TV scheme, and I suppose that is, in a way, what the ash dieback scheme replicates, because... If, if you're a farmer unlucky enough to go down with TB, you're, the animals that have TB are, are compensated for and, and removed. But there's no knock-on effect. In there's no knock-on payment for, for calves that animal may have had or milk lost. And in a way, the, the ash dieback scheme is, is, is based on a similar... Um, you, are, you are compensated to remove and to replant the trees. But at the moment, we're not uh, you know, extending the premium out and... That, that is something that um, at the moment we have not, you know, we are not considering. But I think we we have been keeping the, the ash dieback scheme, you know, it is under review because things keep changing. Um, originally, the, the purposes a number of years ago of the ash dieback was to try and prevent its spread. We now know it's essentially um, endemic in the country. So it's no longer about prevention, but it's about trying to, to slow down the spread um, and to, to do what we can. But I think that extending it to plantations over 25 years has been widely welcomed. And I, I'm, I'm happy to see that. Uh, I think I, I do know the lady you are referring to, and I, I, I did indeed indicate that I will, when I get the chance, come and will visit her plantation, and um, um, I, I'll, I'll stick by that as soon as I get the opportunity.